We're in a series. We began the first week of Power Couples looking at Genesis, God's original design for marriage and for the family and the fact that, number one, he made us to reflect his image and likeness, that marriage and us as human beings, we were designed in his image. And number two, We walk in the authority that God has given us and we tend our gardens. That's so good. That God's original design, six days of creation, that he makes us in his image and says, hey, this is yours. Take care of it. Take care of it. Yeah. And one of my personal favorite topics, number three, naked and and unashamed. unashamed. And that means to be naked and unashamed before God. And each other. That's right. There's no hidden thing mm-hmm. between us. There is no secrets between us. There's no secrets between God and I because mm-hmm. God knows it well, anyway. Yeah, like you can't be like, did, you, did he see it? Like he saw. He already knows. <laughs> right. Like in the beginning, Adam and Eve hid themselves and God went looking for them. For them. You know? Right. He knew where they were. It's powerful. And then uh, last mm-hmm. week we talked about uh, Power Couples Part 2 that God wants us to be imitators of himself. That when we reflect him, we reflect his love. Uh, and we saw that in Ephesians 5, 1 through 7. And the first thing is God's love is selfless. Mm-hmm. It gives at the expense of self for the benefit of others. I love that definition. We talked about lust is giving. Or, or, or lust actually is, is seeking to take. Take at the expense of others. For the benefit of self. Yeah. I mean, nothing could be more unlike God than trying to get something from someone else for the benefit of yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says God so loved the whole world. And we know the world is messed up. Mm -hmm. But he so loved the people in it that he gave. Yeah, his only son. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. And that God's love is sacrificial. Put your spouse first. Mm -hmm. And for those that are single, put others first. I talked about that first pastor's conference. Who's the greatest? Well, those who serve others. Mm -hmm. You want to be great? Then serve everyone else. And the number three, that God's love is sweet. Fragrant. Mm, It's Mm. wonderful. Wonderful. Your love is sweet. Your love is sweet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love that. And number four, God's love shows appreciation. It expresses gratitude. Mm -hmm. That I'm saying, I see you and Mm -hmm. I I see the fact that you are made in the image and likeness of God. And that when we express gratitude, we're saying to others and to God, I see the creation, God, that you've made. And I am so grateful to you that what you've made is fearfully and wonderful. It is beautiful because it reflects your image and likeness. It reminds me as parents, when we give our gifts, give our children or our children are gifts. Mm -hmm. But when we give our children gifts, And they come back with, oh, mommy, oh, daddy, thank you. And we recognize that thankfulness and that heart of gratitude, it makes us want to give more. More. Same way with your spouse. When I show, when I do things for you and you show gratitude, it makes me want to do more and vice versa. You know, you've heard this before, you know, ladies, if you want your guy to do something expressing gratitude, he will want that gratitude again and he'll do it again. Right. You know, where there's a whole there's a relationship there uh, that, you know, for many, it might be untapped, but it's a way that God designed us that yeah. we we like to go in those places where people you know that song. Sometimes you want to go. So, you know, gratitude is powerful <laughs> this week. Power Couples Part 3 is we're going to talk about reflecting God's light. Mm. You know, this reminds me of that song as a kid. I used to love this song and and I was so excited about the words. And, and, you know, it's that this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And so as I was thinking about that song, as as God's grace would be for me, I'm about seven years old, we went to like the circus or it could have been ice capage or something. And the guy was walking around with, with a, a walking concession and he wasn't selling food. He was selling flashlights, flashlights. And to a seven-year-old, a flashlight, man, I had to have it. So mm-hmm. I'm like, mom, dad, please, please, please. And they said, sure. 
and I picked out this blue flashlight and it was amazing. And I looked around the dome and there were so many other kids there with their flashlights and this <laughs> beautiful blue glow was all around. It was amazing. And I had a vision, a vision of being a hero that one day the, the lights would go out and I would take my little light and, and do what the song says, like this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And it didn't happen right away, but shortly thereafter, sure enough, the lights went out. And I reached for my little light and I was so <laughs> excited because I got to be a hero in my mind, in my imagination. It was going to be awesome. I would turn this light on and, and it would be like the sun dawning right there <laughs> in my room. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, my dreams and my hopes all came crashing down yes. when I turned the light on and I realized I couldn't see a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's the same way in our life that when we try to re reflect light and, and mm -hmm. show our light, we don't, we don't accomplish much that I became like everyone else. I couldn't see. And we see in Ephesians five, chapter eight, it mm -hmm. says, for once you were darkness. Emphasize the word were. before coming to Christ, we were darkness, mm -hmm. but now. After Christ, I like to call it BC before Christ. <laughs> exactly. Right before I came to Christ, that's what I was. I was in darkness, and now after Christ, we were in darkness. Sure, but that. now you are light in the Lord. Mm, that's good. Walk as children of the light. Live as those who are native born to the light. So that's saying, even though I was born in this world in darkness, but mm -hmm. when I give my life to Christ, I'm no longer that native child of darkness. I am now a native child of the light. Mm -hmm. That's so good. That is good. For the fruit, the effect, the result of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Trying to learn by experience what is pleasing to the Lord and letting your lifestyle be examples of what is most acceptable to him. Your behavior expressing gratitude to God for your salvation. Mm -hmm. Do not participate in worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness, but instead expose them by exemplifying personal integrity, moral courage and godly character. For it is disgraceful even to mention the things that such people practice in secret, but in all things, but all things become visible when they are exposed by the light of God's precepts. For it is light that makes everything visible. visible. Mm. For this reason, he says, awake, mm. sleeper, arise from the dead. And Christ will shine as dawn upon you and give you light. Wow. So this tells us that God's light, number one, gives us direction, the right path in your marriage, in your home, that you now have the ability in the light to know which way to go, the right path. And those three things, goodness, and righteousness and truth, that I can love my wife with these three things. Mm -hmm. I can love my children with these three things. I can represent the kingdom well because I'm no longer a native of child of darkness, mm -hmm. but I am now a native child, child of the light. light, that the actions that I now have, they are full of goodness, that now I'm walking in righteousness because mm -hmm. I'm walking in the light. And now when I'm doing things, I don't have to go down the path of a lie, but I can go down the path of truth. Because you know the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as it says there in Ephesians 5, 8, for once you were darkness, I was darkness. That literally we once were darkness. Mm -hmm. And as my wife said, but now I am light in the Lord. And I can walk as a child of light and I can live as though those who are native born to the light. Uh, this reminds me of the fact that David said it this way in Psalms 119, uh, verse uh, 105. 119 is an amazing passage, but take some time, get you a couple of apples. <laughs> you know, so you're going to take you a little bit of time to read it, but it is powerful. 
And he says in verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You see, I was trying to use my flashlight mm -hmm. and trying to light the room, but, but it didn't work. But when I allowed myself to be like a mirror mm -hmm. and the bright light shining from God reflects on me, then all of a sudden I can see. And notice it doesn't say that it's thy, that his word is a lamp uh, unto my feet and a lamp to my feet. It doesn't say that it, it's that it's this this 50 watt candle. It's not right. lighting up the whole room. It's just giving you enough so that you know this is the right path to go mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. The second thing that that God's light does is that God's light gives us instruction. Ephesians 5:10 says, trying to learn by experience what is pleasing to the Lord and letting your lifestyles be examples of what is most acceptable to him. Your behavior expressing gratitude to God for your salvation. Hmm. This reminds me, um, maybe even last year, we were watching a, a marriage series hmm. from a ministry and they began the teaching by saying there's not much instruction about marriage in the Bible. And we thought, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, the Bible is God's a love story to us. Yeah. He wrote it's our handbook, it's our, our instruction handbook. manual. It teaches us how to live our life and everything. Without it, we have no instruction. Listen, without it, we have no government. That's right. Our government is ran off the principles of God. That's right. Right. Things that we have are from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Institutions that were formed. That's Marriage right. comes from the Bible. Leadership. Bible. Bible. Finances. Uh, Bible. Parenting. Bible. <laughs> Bible. <laughs> right? Everything, <laughs> Everything is there. you need is found in God's <laughs> word, even so much as communication. communication yeah. Right. For instance, there's a scripture, Proverbs 15, 1. It says a soft and gentle and thoughtful answer mm. turns away wrath. That's good. But harsh and painful and careless words stir up anger. So that means in a heated discussion, we like to call it, or argument, yeah. and those who are do, who do we're we have, angry. Do we have those? Well, we have those. Oh, we have, so we do have those. We have those, right? I, I thought they were passionate they were, discussions. They were passionate <laughs> discussions, right? When one is angry, mm -hmm. sometimes you want to lash out at that person. Mm -hmm. You want to call them names. You may want to throw stuff at them. You may want to slam doors, right? But look what God's word tells you. It says a soft and gentle and thoughtful answer turns away that wrath, right? It turns away that. So when our mate may be angry and may be yelling, our response matters. It does. The Bible teaches us what our response should be. That's yeah, good. Right? I remember growing up, or actually, I wasn't. I was an adult at this time yeah. with my uh, aunt. Jason and I were there talking with her, and she was upset with us. And she was letting us know she was upset with us. I think she was and upset with you. She was good with me. No, she <laughs> was upset with the both of us. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I don't know what to say to her. Mm -hmm. I felt like my words wouldn't have been enough. Mm -hmm. I could have gone back and said, exchanged words with her, but I didn't think it was necessary. Mm -hmm. And all I could think of was going and sitting on her lap. Mm -hmm. And I did it. I went and sat on her lap. I gave her a hug and I gave her a kiss on her cheek and she melted. Mm, that's powerful. All of that's that so anger that she was spewing out at us because she was upset about mm. something, probably something legitimate. Mm. I don't remember. But I remember it melted when I sat on her lap. I didn't say a thing. And when I came across this scripture, I could understand it mm. because I had that memory, That's so a gentle answer. My answer to her anger was a hug and a kiss and her demeanor changed. Mm. That's so powerful. It melted. Imagine that in an argument yeah. with your spouse, a heated one, changing up. Well, I remember you did this to me. She, oh. this, this right here, this is like, um, uh, uh, 
communication judo, like action. So, <laughs> so I'm sitting here and I don't remember what we were talking about. It's probably a time I left socks out or something, which I tend to do from time to time. I'm sorry. I'm working <laughs> on it. You know, it's only been almost 20 years, but I'm working on it. So we're having a conversation and in the middle of the conversation, I'm like, just trying to prove my point, right? You know, the acronym war, we are right. Like I'm right. And, uh, she, she says, Hey, wait a minute, you're thirsty. And she runs and gets me a cup of water. And, and y'all, I was so thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing more in life mm-hmm. that I wanted than to have a cup of water. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm telling you, she gave me the water and I was deflated and I just, you know, you know what? I'm sorry. Right. It mm-hmm. was, it was just, there it was right there. I, I got to experience my wrath and how she responded with a gentle answer and it just completely melted me and and uh my thirst was no longer <laughs> present <laughs> she set me up set me up y'all so god <laughs> god gives us light right and he gives us instruction his word gives us instruction you know communication is is in the top 5 of reasons why people divorce yeah they don't know how to talk they to don't each know other. how to talk to each other they and that's interesting because communication is it's key to everything. It is. You talk about intimacy, you talk about finances, you talk yeah. about your family, you talk yeah. about everything. And if that's an issue for you, then you, you know, plans fail. If right. you can't talk and come up with a plan, then how can you come together? Right. If you don't communicate with God and you don't pray, you don't talk to him and your communication is busted with him and others, then you're not going to have a successful life. Yeah. Well, the same is true in marriage. And so for us, want to let everyone know that God's word is an instruction to us. It's a handbook for every area of our lives. It, right. His light gives instruction. Mm-hmm. Uh, the third thing we see is that, that his light gives us eyes to see. It exposes the darkness. And we see this in, in, in Ephesians 5.11. It says, do not participate in worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness, but instead expose them by exemplifying personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character. For it is disgraceful even to mention the things that such people practice in secret. And in verse 13, but all things become visible when they're exposed by the light of God's precepts, for it is light that makes everything visible. <laughs> That's so good. I love this. Um, I reminded of our son. Um, one of our sons was dealing with fear and he was having trouble even using the the bathroom at night because he was afraid to get out of his bed and go use the restroom. You're seeing shadows in the dark. Right. Mm-hmm. And so he came and told me, Uh, that this had happened again. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, I said, son, let's go in your room. And I grabbed a flashlight and I said, turn off all the lights. And at the time they had loft beds. And so there was room underneath for us to go under there and sit. So we ran underneath his bed and sat down. Yeah. (laughs) We sat down underneath there uh, to talk. And I said, son, what is it? It's dark right now. What do you see? Can you see anything? And he said, no, I can't see anything, mom. And I said, turn on the flashlight. Wow. And I said, what do you see now? He said, I can see. I said, do you know that the darkness flees when you turn turn on the light? light." Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I said, anytime you get up and you're afraid and you think that you see some shadow in the darkness, Shine your flashlight on it and mm. expose it. Yeah. And you'll see that that wasn't really there. That yeah. was just a shadow a shadow yeah. of something. Mm. It's the same way with God's word, right? Or yeah. with things going on in our lives. Yeah. God's light shines upon us and it exposes the darkness. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, it's very practical when you think about it, right? So if you're going to go down a particular path and it's dark, right? You don't know which way to go. That even in darkness, something that might seemingly be harmless can actually cause great damage. I mean, I have hit my head jumping into my bed. I mean, I was about 13 or so and told not to do that, but I did it in the mm-hmm. dark and I missed. And the result bookshelf, my bookshelf, it, it caused some damage, right? So even things that are supposed to be there in the dark, you don't see what's there. But when you turn the light on, 
simple obstacles are removed, right? I saw the bookshelf. I can see all the different things. Well, how much more when you bring God's word to be a light to help you understand how to live your life? That things in the darkness, because I used to be a native child of darkness, that now that I have God's word as precepts, I can understand that I'm not supposed to do that, right? You, you think about relationships and, and the thing that holds us together is trust. Well, the perspective of trust and unity in the dark is completely different than when you bring it into the light. Sin issues, things that you might struggle with, it is given power in the darkness. But all of a sudden, when you turn the light on, what happens? Just like when our son turned on the flashlight, it is gone, it is exposed, and it no longer has power. So this is why if you're struggling in an area, don't keep it hidden. Allow God's word to expose it and bring it into the light. And when you bring it into the light, then your spouse is aware. God's already aware. But now the three of you can actually partner together and shine light on that thing. And it will no longer have power over you. We, we do this with our kids when they're struggling in an area. So, hey, you know what? Share that with us. We're not going to browbeat you, but we're going to pray for you. We're going to encourage you. We're going to love on you. And we're going to keep on helping to, re- to reflect the light so that that thing that was holding you in bondage no longer has power over you. Because you see, sometimes in the dark, things can look good. But when you turn on the light, you realize that that's not the right path to go. Mm -hmm. So the light helps us understand the darkness and what's there and what's beneficial and what's not. Mm, That's so good. Uh, The fourth thing is that God's light gives us life. And we see this in uh, Ephesians 5.13 says, but all things become visible when they are exposed by the light of God's precepts, for it is the light that makes everything visible. For this reason, he says, awake sleeper, arise from the dead and Christ will shine as the dawn upon you and give you light. You see, I'm I'm aware that in the darkness, things can grow, but the kind of things that like to grow in the darkness are not beneficial for you. Mm. Weeds like to grow in the darkness. Secrets like to be given strength and manifest in the darkness. But when you turn on the light and you expose that thing, darkness flees, darkness flees. And all of a sudden, the very thing that is left behind once the light is on is what you can give life to. God is speaking to us, speaking Mm -hmm. to me. He's speaking to our marriages. He's speaking to our families. And and I believe he is saying to all of us, awake sleeper, Mm -hmm. arise from the dead and Christ will shine as the dawn upon you and give you light. You see, this world is full of darkness Mm -hmm. and the world is, it doesn't know how to walk in the light. And so God in his brilliance, such a great plan. He placed us here not to walk around with a little blue flashlight like I had. It, it's meaningless. It's worthless. I can't let people see the, the, the light by walking in my own light. But when I allow myself, when we allow our, we allow our family to be a mirror of God's image and likeness, then all of a sudden the light from God himself begins to illuminate in our neighborhoods, mm-hmm. in our communities in our families. You see, as my wife was saying earlier about uh, the ability that we have in Proverbs 15, 1, the, that a gentle answer turns away wrath. She had the ability at that point in time to be a mirror image of me. When she was having the conversation with her aunt, she had the ability and the opportunity to be a mirror image of her aunt, but she instead chose to reflect God's light in the circumstance. You see, it's not always easy when you're being insulted and somebody's yelling at you or accusing you to respond in love. But when you have God's light and love living on the inside of you, Mm -hmm. then it becomes your new default setting. Because see, before, as it says before, we were children of darkness. Darkness. Mm -hmm. For once you were darkness, but now, You are light in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Walk as children of light. Live as those who are native born in the light. So now, because we're children of light, we can resist the temptation of walking in in our dead nature. This is why he says, arise, awake, because we are now 
children of light. Proverbs 27 helps us understand the importance of this. You see, God's called our home and our marriage and our life to be lasting fruit. That this is not just a a teaching for us, but it's a teaching for our families, for our children and for those around us. And when a when a tree is producing life and giving light and producing fruit, then here's what it says in Proverbs 20. The righteous man who walks in integrity and lives life in accord with godly beliefs, how blessed, Mm. happy and spiritually secure are his children after him who have his example to follow. Mm -hmm. You see, when we walk this way, it allows our children, it allows our community, it allows the world to be a better place because we are not reflecting the hate that is given to us, but we are instead reflecting God's love. Mm -hmm. We're following the same example that Jesus did, that he so loved the world that he gave what? Himself. And who is he? God is love. So in the midst of all of the pain, we have an opportunity to reflect God's life. And it says, how blessed are his children. Mm. It's never just about you. Never. So when when we start doing things that are contrary to the word of God, it's never just about you. Mm-hmm. It's also, we have to keep in mind, how blessed are your children after, after you. you. That's far. Right? That's so good. So when you grab this and you hold on to it, you realize that it's a ripple effect, Mm -hmm. right? And sometimes it might start small, but over time you will see that there's a generational benefit to this. Yeah. And so I want to pray for us. I want to pray for us all. I want to pray as we reflect God's light, that we would remember that God's light, number one, it gives us direction, Mm -hmm. the right path. Number two, that it gives us instructions. Number three, It gives us eyes to see and expose darkness. Mm -hmm. And number four, God's light gives us life. And so since he's made us in his image and likeness, his desire is that we would be his representatives to reflect that in our communities, in our homes, and in our marriage. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Well, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for the opportunity that we have to reflect love and life and, and light. Father, I pray that Those who have experienced just such a tragic time and have not been exposed to this light, that, Father, they would allow the word to not bring about condemnation, but conviction. That spouses, Father Lord, would allow the light of God to illuminate. That parents would allow the light of God to illuminate their relationship. That singles would allow the light of God to help convict them in their relationship with you and with others. And that, Father, as a result, the kingdom of God would begin to be a mirror of your kingdom and out of this world, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you are saying, you know what? I don't even know who God is or I'm struggling. Well, we want to pray for you. Join me now and and begin that first step that if you're going to reflect God's light and his love in in this world, it begins with knowing who he is. Mm -hmm. So I want to pray and give you that opportunity now. Pray with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I want to reflect your love. I want to reflect your love. And I want to reflect your light. And I want to reflect your light. So I give you my past. So I give you my past. All my hurt. All my hurt. All my pain. All my pain. All my shame. All my shame. I give you my present. I give you my present. And my future. And my future. I give you my life. I give you my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you've prayed that, let us know. Text the word hello to 833-750-1352 or fill out a connection card and we're going to follow up with you. Well, we're going to go into one last worship song. We love you. God bless you. And let's be the light that God's called us to be in our neighborhood, in our communities, and most importantly, in our homes. God bless.